You know, Mike, uh, one of my favorite patterns of yours is that electric caddis. Uh, I know this is not really the prime caddis time on the ranch here, but we had a time uh, the, earlier this summer where we were doing a little sight fishing, and that caddis was unbelievable. Well, it is. I think the thing that happens is, uh, you know, these fish get fished over a lot. And it's, everybody thinks of mayflies as the primary aquatic insect, but there's some really important caddis species that are here. Most of them are little net makers. A lot of them are kind of a green color, and uh, I think not only do the fish really get tuned into eating those caddis larvae and pupa, but also it's a pattern that for some reason anglers often overlook, and so you get a chance to show the fish a pattern that they don't see as much as, as the mayfly pattern. I also think that it's important when you actually see a fish in the water and you're watching the fish is to cast so the fly comes into his window a little bit to the side rather than straight on him. Mm -hmm. Because if it's straight on him, he can open his mouth and reject that fly and you'll never know it. But if it's off to the side, you'll watch the fish move over and just intercept that nymph and move back. And that's kind of what we were doing and that's a great way to fish this river if there isn't any activity on the surface. And we were fishing it together because you were looking right into some pretty tough glare and I had the elevation of the cliff and what I thought was interesting is that you don't always win. You'd caught, uh, you'd hooked three fish and, and broke them off before you finally landed that one fish and uh, this is a tough river to land every fish isn't it? Well it is, they're big fish and you, you usually are required to use small flies and very light tippets in order to get them to take the fly and if you got to fish on the trout's terms not yours or you're not going to do any good. Well I tell you right now that uh, that caddis should be in everybody's box. That's perfect. He took it. <laughs> you were at the, I'll tell you I don't know if he took it or he just went over there and looked at it. <laughs> That's all right. Hey look at that time. <laughs> Yes, Michael! I saw the <laughs> Good for you. I go under that time. That's a troublemaker. You make that fish pay, will you? Well, I wish we could land one of them. I'll tell you, that other fish might come around and help you. He's so mad at that fish. All right. Why, why don't you walk down with him? Take him down below here if you need to. Ah. <laughs> uh. I'm coming. I'm coming for moral support. Well, that's a strong fish, Jack. I know. Oh. Well, is there a point to walk him down? Well, he's not walkable yet. Okay. He's, he's not going down, he's going up. Well, this would be a... He's right under my feet here now. Um, you want me to sneak down below him? Yeah. Without spooking him? Nice place right here, Mike. Yeah, that's what I was looking at, but if we can get him settled down again. I gotta get way below him. I keep spooking him. Okay. He's gonna get in those rocks now. I think it's gonna be better if you can yep. just uh, kind of hold up, because all he's doing is running. I know, and I just kept trying to get ahead of him. Just with this 6X. He, this is going to be tough. If if you if he'll go upstream, Mike, maybe he can get down below now. All right, get in front of that. Uh, yep. Log thing. I'm just going to take it nice. Yeah, I'm going to move him in the shallow water. Go ahead. <laughs> finally get one in the net. <laughs> Oh man, these are wild fish. Yeah, they're beautiful fish, aren't they? This is a troublemaker. We are, we've definitely taken them See, out. That's a nice rainbow. Beautiful. We're they're, good. they're about as pretty a rainbow as there are in existence. Yeah, let's see. The nymph's up here in the yep. right in the top of his mouth. Okay, I got you. I got him. All right. Now we'll let him get a little bit of. Boy, isn't that beautiful. Oh, it is beautiful. You know, 
that's what you always think about one of these big wild fish. You don't, you don't catch many of them. See, he's getting ready to go. Hang on, buddy. I want you to hold a little longer. I want to get him. This water is not the coldest. Look at those spots. Yeah. Not those. Big. And see, every fin's perfect. Oh, I know. None of these bent fins. There he goes, right? <laughs> he's going to go hide under you, Jack. Yeah, no, he's headed to the main river. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Ready to tie some flies. Right, I want to see that caddis that you hooked that big fish on. That's the one we lost. We yep. got out in the weeds. A right. Big old fish. Of course, it was the always the biggest fish that no, gets I away. I think it was. But we're going to use a curved caddis hook. I don't know can you, whether. Yeah, I can see that. How that shows up. Yep, that looks good. And I've got a little dark bead. I don't. Sometimes I don't like those gold beads. I think they kind of spook the fish. Hole. Oh, these fly tying beads have a. T they're tapered. Right. And you want to put the small hole in here. And that'll butt right up against the eye of the hook. And the, the, now, what do you call this fly that This is on? called an electric caddis. That's because it's a shockingly yeah, good Yeah, well, I'll show you how, why. We're going to put some of this uh, pearlescent tinsel on it, and that's going to liven it up good. so the fish will notice it. Uh, it looks, when you put some of this shiny stuff on, I think it kind of gives the effect of air bubbles. Mm -hmm. And nymphs do have a lot of shine to them a lot of times. We'll use some olive thread because we're going to stay with olive. You don't have to tie this thing in olive. I know it's an eight-aught thread. Eight-aught thread and I do a couple of colors of this. I do one of them in a green caddis and one, the other one I like has kind of got a cream body mm -hmm. and this is going to be the green one. That's the one we were using today. We're going to put some uh, some of this on here that we're going to pull over the back. Notice that this is in different sizes. This mm -hmm. is a large. And now you're we'll going to put any lead this. on that? No, we don't need any lead. If we had lead, we'd end up with too much weight. Mm -hmm. and then I'm just going to tie this on. And this is what we're going to pull over the back. And I want to wind that down into the middle of this bend. And then what we're going to put is some of this wire. Now the one we had today had gold wire, mm -hmm. but I just think this is the neatest wow, stuff. It's great stuff. You get this wire in all colors, and uh, that's almost a ultra fluorescent. wire. Yeah, look at that, and that's going to really add yep. some more of this color. Ultra wire. So we'll put that on, and then we got to be careful that we don't dub the body too thick. We're going to use an Antron blend of dubbing. But I want it to be pretty skinny on that. So I'm going to put a little bit of, of uh, wax on this thread. This is wax thread, but this will kind of make it a little easier to dub it. And then I'm going to just take a little bit of this stuff and kind of split it up and then in my hand. You can see the shine in this stuff yeah. with that Antron. You know our old buddy Gary LaFontaine? Nobody ever heard of Antron before he brought it forth. And it's one of the great fly tying materials that I've ever seen. Now I'm just going to start this and then I'll just hold on to the dubbing and just let it feed itself out. That's a great technique. And it just see how it just wraps itself mm -hmm. on there? And yet we can keep it kind of kind of slender. We're going to make the head a little darker. So we've got all we need on the body and so now we can just pull pretty much the rest of this out and uh, just wrap it up to finish the head off. We're still going to add a little more on the head. The next thing we're going to do is pull this uh, pearl tinsel over the Antron body. So you got to keep that right on top. You can make a little scud like this too and it works mm -hmm. pretty good. And then we're just going to wrap all that down with our wire. So we'll just start here and just make a segmented look. You got to be kind of careful that this uh, pearlescent tinsel doesn't slide over on the sides. So right. see, I'm kind of being careful to keep it up on the top. And then we've got this little shiny thing. And now you can kind of see where the term mm -hmm. electric caddis comes right. from. So then 
we want to finish this off with a little darker head mm -hmm. and we'll put a little bit of legs on it. So what I'm going to do here is take some of this partridge feather. You use a lot of partridge in your feathers. I love partridge. I think it's the greatest stuff. One reason I love it is because I love to hunt partridge. I know. I was going to say it's yeah. a good excuse for you to go hunting. <laughs> it sure is. They're, they're fun little birds to hunt. So what we're going to do is uh, just going to take some of this partridge and I don't use much of it so I'm just going to take about six or eight strands of it, tie it on here, and just kind of let it roll over so it kind of comes out on the, kind of over on the side of the fly, on this side. And then we'll put another little batch of it on the other side, just a few fibers. Kind of give a little bit of movement to the fly. We got some here on this side. I think I've got a little heavier amount. So we'll tie this right on this side. Oh, good. Yeah, we'll get them on the sides and then uh, that's about right. Just kind of give some little legs on there. And then we're going to take some of this stuff and you know what this yeah. stuff is because you use this too it's called Arizona Peacock Crisps. Dummy. Yep, Peacock Dummy or Arizona Crystal Yeah, Rabbit. And, and boy does that stuff look buggy. Mm -hmm. Okay now we're going to take some of this and this stuff's a little harder to dub because it's really uh, coarse so I'm going to make sure to again wax the thread and then we'll just use that same dubbing technique and you can also just use the real deal here mm -hmm. real peacock sure. sometimes I use that but kind of like this Arizona dubbing now we're just going to wrap this on there just to, and that's all we need just just enough to darken the head up and then we'll finish it up here and that kind of sticks out all over everywhere and we got to find our Web finisher. And we're pretty much done with our little caddis. Simple and effective. Oh, yeah, it's a great fly. I've used this for quite a few years, actually. It's been around a long time. Yeah, it's a great little fly. What I'm going to do is just kind of put it in this hackle plier so you can see it a little better. Can you see that thing? Oh yeah, that's that's great looking. And yeah. Notice when it swings around on yep. the back, then you get that shine. And I kind of like that this color on this bead. Right. So many of them are so bright, you know, right. gold. Or some of them are bright gold or bright silver, but this is kind of a pewter, and it, mm -hmm. it notice how it just kind of blends into it. Right. I like copper too. That's a good color. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. brown. I'd probably mm -hmm. go with the copper. Yeah. Well, I think that'd be good. Yeah. To try with the brown one. Little electric caddis fly.